here's what we're looking at. The question, it says, then how many students were on campus in the afternoon? So everybody, is it true that what we're looking for is, again, blank students. I'll just say blank afternoon students. Oh, are we good, everybody? Again, that's all we're looking for, the number of afternoon students on campus. Again, even if you have no idea how to get this done, we still should be able to identify the question. Is that the question? We're looking for the number of students in the afternoon, yes or no. Cool. Next up, let's see what information we have. Let's see if we can map it out. Let's see how this fits in. So over here, before noon, 517 students were on campus. If 47% of all students were on campus in the morning and 93% in the afternoon, then how many students were on campus in the afternoon? So it looks like we have some connected information. Again, we're looking for the students in the afternoon. And I noticed over here, 93% of all students were there in the afternoon. So cool. Everybody, is it fair to say that the number of afternoon students is connected to the percent, 93%? Are those connected? Yeah, they're connected. Again, being able to set up proportions really relies on your ability to see those comparisons happening in real time. Oh, guess what? If you wanted to join all of our classes for a full week for free, then I highly recommend you join our full program trial, no credit card required, and it's easy to join. All you have to do is text TRIAL to 833-321-0182 or check the link in the description of this video to get started. Super easy, and I'll help you raise your score and show you the right way. Let's go. Next up, notice how we're given over here. 517 students were on campus before noon or in the morning. And we see that it says 47% of all students were on campus in the morning. So everyone, is it fair to you that we express it like this? 517 morning students. And that corresponds with 47%. Is that fair to write in that way? And again, if you have any questions at all, yeah, feel free to ask those questions. Ruby, you get the setup right? Good, good. So who here believes that they got the setup right? Just looking at it like, like this, like now. Who feels like they got the setup correct? Good, yeah, and, and I'll review it again for sure. So what we have here is we're comparing the number of students present and that's compared with the percent of all students that that represents. So here in green, we're told, hey, there's 517 students in the morning, and that represents 47% of the population. They're basically saying 517 students, that's 47% of the population. We're trying to figure out how many students corresponds with 93% of the population. And this red, again, represents afternoon. Green represents the morning, red represents the afternoon, but it's the same comparison though. The number of students and the percent of the population. Number of students, percent of the population. Does that make a little more sense there? Again, the comparison is the number of students compared to the percent. Cool, cool. So let's go ahead, use a variable, and let's tackle the solution. Let's see what we got. All right, so we have x over 93 so x students over 93 percent is equivalent to over here 517 students over 47 percent all right now that we're looking at this i mean do you feel like you see a very quote easy way here is this something that looks potentially doable for y'all. Is there a comparison that you can make? Is there something you can do to simplify? Did anybody here see any possibility for that? 
Tammy says you can simplify 517 divided by 47. Bruce, 517 and 47. Okay. So here's the thing about 40 people. I'm going to show you the straight up way because look at that. Only, what is that, three people? Only three students here saw that there was a simplification that you could make. And out of 103 people, that still leaves a lot of folks, almost 98% of the students here that still leaves that didn't quite see the simplification that you could make. So let's pretend that not, none of us saw it. We're going to cross, multiply, and divide like normal. And I'm going to show you how to work through this even if the numbers are big. Just work through it by trusting your gut. So x multiplied by 47, that's going to be 47x. And now we have to go ahead and multiply 517 by 93. That's not going to be a big deal. As long as we handle this the right way, we're fine. So 517 multiplied by 93. 7 multiplied by 3 is 21. 1 multiplied by 3 is 3. Carry the 2, that's 5. Then up next we have 5 multiplied by 3, and that'll give us 15. Now we'll go to the next digit. We'll go ahead and start working on this 9 over here. So we'll place a 0 right over here, and we'll work with it. 9 multiplied by 7, that gives us 63. Then we have 1 multiplied by 9, that's 9. Carry the 6, that gives us 15. Then we have 5 multiplied by 9, giving us 45. Carry the 1 is 46. And again, work with your math confidently. You know, we didn't see the simplification that we can make, so let's work with the numbers we have. Next up, add them together. We have 1, 8, 10, carry that. That becomes 8, and that's 4. So 47x equals 48,081. So my party people, does that look like a lot of fun to you? Right, doesn't look like all the fun in the world, but you need to be able to handle your business. You have to be able to handle your business because all this is is multiplication, as we just saw, and now it's division. We know how to long multiply. We know how to long divide. It's up to you to get more effective at it and be able to do it quicker. So next, the last step we'll take is to divide both sides by 47. And let's see what we have. So here we go. I'll go ahead and perform long division right over here. And watch, it may not even be as bad as you think. Everyone, how many times does 47 go into 48? Just once. Sounds good. So we'll subtract 47, leaving 1, then we'll drop that 0. My party people, how many times does 47 go into 10? None. Zero times. So we'll mark a 0 right there. And then we'll drop the 8 again right there. Everyone, how many times does 47 go into 108? Twice. Sounds good. We'll place a 2 right there, and we will go ahead and subtract. 47 times 2 is what, everybody? If you need to write it down on the side, go ahead. But 47 times 2 is 94, but I'll just go ahead and show it to you right here. 7 times 2, that's 14. 4 times 2, that'll be 8, and then carry the 1 is 9. So we have 94 being subtracted leaving us with 14. All right, and from there, we're going to drop that 1. Everyone, how many times does 47 go into 141? Or what number would you like to guess? Yeah, 3 would work. And if you're thinking about, hey, look, 47, pretty close to 50. 141, kind of close to 150. So it looks to be about 3. And you can test it out for yourself on the side. You can test it out and say 47 times 3, that's 21. Then 2 times, or excuse me, 4 times 3 is 12. Carry the 2, that's 14. So once you have that, okay, cool, that's a perfect 3. We subtract that, and we're done. And so our final answer, everybody, would be 1,023. And boom, we're good. And so there's our answer right over here, B, 1,023. Again, that's because X here equals 1,023.
So before you pay any huge amount of dollars or money to anybody claiming that they can help you pass the ASVAB, you should always consider what they offer for free. With us, we're gonna be offering our full program for free for a full week. All you gotta do is do that right there or scan that QR code and you'll get access to all of our classes, practice problems, courses, everything for a full week so you know exactly how it works and you have the exact confidence that you need to raise your score. Get started now. I'll see you in there.